Revelation chapter 30. You know, we've been preaching through the end times. I'm going to throw this in that Antichrist series just because it kind of goes along with it. But we've been preaching through on the Antichrist, and we're going to talk about the evil trinity and the mocking that takes place with that. And then we're going to, Lord willing, possibly Wednesday, I might get into the image of the beast when the image of the beast takes life and how that relates to today and what's going on because they are trying to give life under the image. But I'll, I'll maybe talk a little bit about that here, but I'll save most of that for Wednesday or Sunday, whichever the Lord leads, when we get into this and we continue on in this, these end time sermons on the Antichrist and understanding these things. Because I believe these things are going to be more, they're becoming more and more relevant every day. I mean, this with the rise of AI, with the robots, with everything else that is taking place, it is amazing to see what is right before our eyes and exactly how they're using technology and how that, if you study that word technology, it has to do with craft, it has to do with a lot of things. I mean, it goes into a lot of things. There's a lot of amazing things that people do not understand about that and where it's leading us to. It's going someplace, and there's going to be a point that comes to where you and I, are. we check out of it. Where we're like, nope. And people ask, what is that point? Well, I'll give you a hint and a warning. That point is when they try to put something in you. And you're like, nope. <laughs> nope. But I'm telling you, I, I, I'm going to talk about the mark. I'm gonna have to, I've preached on the mark of the beast a long time ago. How long ago was that? Three years ago, maybe? Maybe three years ago. Preached on the mark. But I'm going to preach on it again, and I'm going to add some of these things that I've been learning and studying. But I think you're going to be surprised because how that mark is sold and how it will reach the masses so quickly and be accepted so quickly. It's not going to be this, like, stick a gun to your head, take this mark. That isn't what it's going to be. Oh, no. And we'll, we'll find out. And I'll kind of explain that here when I explain the evil trinity, okay? So let's pray. Father, Lord, please help us as we go through the scriptures. Help us understand them, Lord, and learn and grow thereby. And be warned, Lord, and warn others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, great deception is coming on this earth, and it's coming quickly. I, you're seeing the foreshadowings of that Antichrist spirit and the deception that is already here. We're seeing the great falling away in front of us. We are watching the, the, the foreshadowings. that We're watching the beginnings of that falling away. We're seeing the religious deception. I've never seen religious deception so absolutely high and so absolutely close to the truth right there. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Pay attention. Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. All these numbers matter. We're going to get to them today. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name in his tabernacle, them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him. 
and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Pay attention to each one. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. So life unto an image. We'll talk about that. Of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. He caused. He didn't force. He didn't make them. He caused them. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Now, why is that number six important? Well, man was created on what? Six-day beasts were created on the sixth day. Beasts from the earth. So what do we have? We've got the number six, man and beast. See that? Combined. So you, you, you have the whole setup there for that. Now, so uh, Satan, so now we come to the evil trinity, this mock trinity. A lot of people don't think about this this way. They look at this topic and they think, well, you know, Satan, the false prophet. No, this is an evil trinity. This is his mocking of God. This is his mocking and deception that he is going to do and that most people are going to fall for. So, so we come to this evil trinity, this mock trinity or the anti-trinity, whatever you want to call it. And that's why I call it when Satan plays charades because he wants to mock what God does. He wants to mimic what God does. He wants to try to copy it. He wants to counterfeit. That's what Antichrist means too. He wants to counterfeit what God does. He is always trying to counterfeit the, orig the, the, the original. What do we have in the charismatic movement? A counterfeit of the gifts of the Spirit. They're just they're a counterfeit of them. They don't produce, they, they don't, they're not used to uh, the Jews seek a sign, right? Like we said, those are assigned to Israel, those gifts were. We understand that. That's what those gifts were for primarily. Those sign gifts were for a sign to Israel, right? That's when God was doing a work in Israel. He was building his church from Israel, right? From those people of Israel. And then he pulled them out and called them out of Israel, right? And called them into a church. That's what he did. So the first Christians were what? They were Jews, right? They were converted. They were saved, all right? So um, that was a, a sign to them that God was doing. Every time in the Bible God does a mighty work, what does he do? He does signs and wonders to show that. He did it with Moses, Right? When God was getting ready to do a work, he did signs and wonders with Moses. He used Moses. When God was pulling his people out of Egypt, what did he do? Signs and wonders. When Christ was calling out his church, what did he do? Signs and wonders. Right? Same thing. That's what God did. But when you get to the apostle Paul, that was being like pushed out. That wasn't happening. It was being phased out. Paul wasn't doing those as much. Right? Less of that was happening. Now, God still works, and God still gives his fruit of the Spirit and everything like that. That's part of that. But anyway, so. Um, but God is going to enable. You have to understand something. God is going to allow the Antichrist and this anti, this false trinity, this this uh, fake trinity, He is this counterfeit trinity, he is going to allow it them to have all the power they want. They are going to be completely unleashed. The Holy Ghost of God is not going to stop them from their terror and their reign. He will put them into check at different points and allow certain things to happen. But primarily, the God of this world is going to take over everything. Right? You'll see that God will stop some things from happening, and he'll, he'll stop men from dying for five months, right? He'll do some few things like that. But for the most part, God is going to give them over to their delusion. Remember? These are the times of delusion that are coming. So that's what it is. Okay. So, number one, let's go to the first one here. The dragon. Who is the dragon? He mimics or mocks God the Father. 
He counterfeits God the Father, the dragon. He tries to take the place of God. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Who's the dragon? The dragon is Satan. Turn to Revelation chapter 12. We find out by the scriptures, scriptures always define who is the dragon. Revelation chapter 12, verse number 7, tells us who the dragon is. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out of the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Remember, at that time, we find out, too, that the Antichrist, in Daniel, talks about how the Antichrist pulls down those stars from heaven. How does he do that? Through the dragon. That's how he does it, through the dragon. The dragon gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. Understand, that's how it's going to work. And prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. He's the old serpent, right? That's Satan. Called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. That's the deception. Time for deception. See, that's why I don't believe that's happened yet. I've had arguments with people before. Oh, that's already happened. No, I don't believe that's happened yet. Because this whole world is not under deception yet. It's not. It's coming. I don't believe it's happened yet. I don't believe this has taken place yet. I believe it's going to take place. That war is not yet. When Satan is kicked down to the earth, then he's going to be ticked because he's no longer going to be able to go up there to, to the throne, and he's going to be like, okay, fine, then my dominion is going to reign here. And literally, all hell is going to break loose on this earth. That's what's going to happen. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation, strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. So the great dragon will be cast down to the earth, and he will be able to do his wickedness and unleash all of his power. Here's the context. Revelation chapter 20, verse number 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and the great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. See, the Bible gives you, there's another witness, explains to you who is the great dragon. He is Satan. He is the devil. So we identify the dragon. That's how we identify him, okay? From Scripture explains it. And bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. That hasn't happened yet. I've heard people say, well, Satan's bound. He's just on a long chain. That hasn't happened yet. <laughs> but the dragon will do his best. Satan will do his best to mimic God. Remember, this is his goal. In, in Isaiah chapter 14, verse number 13, verse number we'll start with verse number 10. Isaiah chapter 14, verse number 10. And they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought to the grave, down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which tis weak in the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. That's the dragon mimicking the father, right? I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, in, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake the kingdoms? So what do you have there? You're going to have the Antichrist, and you're going to have Satan. Right there and the false prophet, which we'll get to. He's the second beast. The dragon or Satan will be the father of the Antichrist, the father of the lie. He will be worshipped openly. You will see the height of satanic worship at this time. Satan is called the god of this world, and you will see the worship of the beast. 
of Satan. And Satan is a father, because it says, You're of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, right? Because he's a liar and the father of it. Right? When he speaketh, he speaketh of his own. <laughs> For he is a liar and the father of it. Right? So who is that? He's a father. He is, he is mimicking God the Father here. And Satan will be, and, and uh, the Antichrist will be his offspring. The son of Purdue, which... I'm going to give you an interesting thing I want you that, that is going to be that is going to be somewhat speculative but also some bible to back it up so give you something to think about. All right? I'll do that in a little while. The dragon gives the power to the beast, the antichrist, his son. He will have a full listen, the antichrist will have a full manifestation of satanic power such as this world has never seen before. The bible says and they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Notice the dragon is the central head. He is the central figure. But in the Antichrist will dwell the fullness of Satan's evil. The dragon gives the beast his seat, his power, great authority. God allows him to do this and will use all his satanic power and not be held back at all. The dragon is the devil. Just some interesting facts about the dragon. The dragon, uh, the, the dragon of the Bible is largely a reference to a fearful aquatic monster, now extinct and in symbolic fashion. Some people believe it's extinct. Some people say they're still around. To the devil. The, uh, and it's also a picture of the devil. The ancient dragon mythologies are probably founded in these realities. Legends about dragons abound through the ancient world, dating from thousands of years before Christ and persisting into the 20th century. The dragon figures prominently in the myth mythology of the Oriental people, is deified in the Taoist religion, and was the national emblem of the Chinese Empire. The Roman legions inscribed the dragon on the battle standards. The Norsemen adorned the prows of their ship with dragons. Remember the Viking ship? The Celts and the Teutonic uh, tribes which conquered Britain depicted dragons on their shields. And the dragon appeared on the battle standards of the English kings as late as the 16th century. In the 20th century, the dragon still adorns the armorial bear, uh, bearings of the Prince of Wales. Though overlaid with fantasy, these ancient tales of dragons are, we believe, founded in reality. This is from David Cloud, by the way, Way of Life Encyclopedia. All right, so the Bible talks about the dragon being a fearful sea creature. So you look at the attributes of the dragon, and then you look at Satan, and you see why God calls him a dragon. In these passages, the dragon is identified as an awesome sea creature. Isaiah chapter 27, verse number 1, connects the dragon with Leviathan, which is the fire-breathing monster of Job chapter 41. Uh, strong, he defines the Leviathan as some kind of crocodile or sea monster or something, which, which is really weird because the crocodile is not a large sea monster, so... I don't know where you got that from, but anyway, many, it's funny because many of these people mock the ideas of dragons. It's like they, they tried to explain away the miracles and the things of God, and it's, it, it's sad because what they're doing is they're destroying the pictures of the Word of God. They're not believing the literal interpretation of Scripture. And the fact that even in science they found dragons, you know, they found them. So, I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. Anyway, but... Um, they're, they, you know, a lot of people, th they're extinct, fierce of dinosaurs, or, or some people say even demons. The description of the demons which come out of the bottomless pit in, in Revelation chapter 9, those hybrids, as bizarre as any ancient dragon lore, we believe these are actual creatures. So David Cloud is saying, we believe that those are going to be, those are creatures that are coming out of there. I believe that too. There's, you know, they try, to, they try to interpret these things. Like he says, there's no need to interpret these Bible descriptions on naturalistic grounds. Because you've never seen it before, so it's not true. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You believe the Bible, what it says. You believe the Bible about Behemoth, by, about the dragon, about Leviathan, about a satyr. Are, they're actual creatures. And it's honoring the Bible to believe what the Bible says. And it's honoring God. They are described therein. As a liter and a literal interpretation is not contrary to any known scientific fact. Good point to make. Modern textual critics and commentators would have us believe that the Bible translators of bygone days were subject to the ignorance of supernatural folklore of their day when they wrote of dragons and unicorns and satyrs. It is more likely that the modern critics are blinded by the rationalism of this present hour and therefore have far less wisdom than their forebears. <laughs> That's true. 
He's also, Satan's also that dragon, a serpent. In both these passages, the dragon is used as a parallel to the adder or the asp. We find that in Psalm 91. The Bible talks about Christ is going to uh, conquer the adder. He's going to step on the lion. He's going to destroy the lion and the adder. He's going to stomp him, okay? So the Bible talks about that. Um, a dragon is associated also with desolate places like an owl is. The, uh, there's, there's, uh, there's many poetic descriptions of desolation, everything like that that's in the scriptures. Um, we talk about satyrs and dragons and owls, right? We see that, and that's, that's like a desolate land. David said he, he was a, I think David said or wanted to say he was a companion to, to um, what did he say? Um, a, a companion to owls and to... Um, I can't think of the other one. But anyway, uh, that's, that's what he had said at the time, that he was a companion to these. And that, that was a picture of, you know, desolate places. Because with Satan, there's desolation. You know, that's, that's what there is. Um, anyway, so there also talks about the dragon as, as, a, as a reference of the, of the Egyptian pharaoh. Okay, the Bible deals with that a little bit. And, uh, and then as symbolic reference, obviously Satan is a dragon. I believe he can f- appear as anything he wants to, probably. Okay, so, but his attributes are that of a dragon. That's what the Bible calls him that. But it gives different attributes of Satan. So, all right, anyway, so that's just a little bit on dragons. Um, nothing too exhaustive, but just to, just to touch on it. All right, so Satan is, in this, he is the dragon. He is mimicking God the Father. That's what he's doing. That's his goal. That's what he does. He's a mocker, and he wants to be God. So he wants to be God the Father. That's what, it, that's what his goal is. So he says, he, and this is how he fulfills it. In his mind. Next, beast one is Satan's son, the Antichrist. Mocking the word of God, we see another beast rise up out of the sea. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. What is the sea? People, right? Sea of people. Having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns are the ten crowns, and upon the, or some people say it could be the, the actual abyss. We'll get to that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share something with you about that and have you look at some cross-references and think about some things. I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. So he had the mouth of a lion, right? And a dragon gave him his power, and the dragon gave his power, his seed, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? All right, so we come to this mysterious origin of the Antichrist. So I want to talk a little bit about this with you and, and, and give you some things to think about, all right? The beast descends out of the bottomless pit, we are told, in Revelation chapter 11. Turn there. Revelation chapter 11. This is very interesting. This is something to think about, okay? I'm going somewhere with this. I want you to think about this for a minute, okay? Revelation chapter 11, verse number 7. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So this beast descends out of the sea or out of the bottomless pit, it says. So the Bible says, all right? Revelation 17, verse number 8. Let's turn there, get another reference to that. Revelation 17, verse number 8. And the beast that thou, the beast that thou sawest was... Now this is interesting. Now pay attention. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Okay, now, this is going to get interesting, right? The Antichrist will be Satan incarnate in some mysterious way, and yet will also remain an independent personality who will be cast in the lake of fire with the false prophet a thousand years before Satan meets the same doom in the end. Right? We understand that. Revelation. Now, okay. This is interesting. Okay. So, one theory of this is Judas is the Antichrist. This is one theory. Because his spirit is coming out of the abyss. Remember, because thou sawest what 
because the beast that thou sawest was, so he was on the earth, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. Okay? So, in Revelation chapter 11, verse number 7, we have the first reference to the beast. In the apocalypse, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit. Here the Antichrist is seen issuing forth from the abyss. What is the abyss? It is the abode of lost spirits, the place of their incarceration and torment. Right? Uh, Revelation 20. Go there, you can see that. Revelation 20, verse number 1 through 3. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having a key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on, that, on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. So that's the abyss, right? And then Luke chapter 8. Let's turn there. Luke chapter 8, verse number 31. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. Remember those? The legion, they didn't want, I don't want to go into the deep. Don't send us into the abode of the dead. Don't send us into torment. Don't send us into the abyss. We don't want to go there. Put us in those pigs instead. We don't want to go there. Because he could have sent them there. They don't want to go there. They want to stay roaming around the earth, right? All right. Matthew chapter 9. All right. You still thumbing through your Bible? You paying attention? Matthew chapter 9, verse number 28. And when he was come into the house, the blind man came in. Oops, I got the right. Yeah. The blind man came to him, and Jesus saith unto him, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. I don't know where I got that verse. That was the wrong one. Hey, whatever. It's a good verse, but I don't know where I got that from. Anyway, um, the question naturally arises, how did he get there? So... If the Antichrist comes up out of the abyss, well, how did he get there? Good question. If, he, if he's that beast that arises, then where did he come from? And the answer is when Judas Iscariot died. The Antichrist, many believe, and I'm not saying, I'm, I, I wouldn't say like I would have a major disagreement with somebody if they said, I don't agree with you. I'd be like, that's cool. I'm not that worried about it. I'm really not. All right, it doesn't. It, it's it's not really that big of a deal, in that sense, because we're going to know one day either way, and it's prophecy, and you can disagree about prophecy. Now, some people can't, and they'll lose their mind, but let them go on in this insanity. But we'll just remain calm and just be like, okay, we can disagree. You know what I mean? So you got to be a big boy and be able to disagree about things and not lose your mind. This is not like this major doctrine of, of uh, you know, of salvation or anything like that. Or it's just, it's a, I believe what you would call a scriptural theory that people have liberty to be like, well, I don't know if I follow that. Well, I, the first time I heard, I was like, huh, I heard it like 15 years ago when I first got saved and I started studying. I was like, huh, makes sense to me because something's up here and I'm going to show you the whole thing. So you got to listen all the way to the end. Now, remember what, is, what, what was Judas? Yep, we'll get to that. He was a Jew. We know the Antichrist will be a Jew. We already told that. We'll show you that. But anyway, so we already understand that. And he's going to mimic. What is he going to mimic? Christ. Who better to do it than somebody that walked with him for three and a half years? Who knew him better? Now, we're going to get to all the scriptures, so save all your thoughts to the end. Let me get through everything. I'm going to teach all the way through this, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so how did he get there? Now, turn to Acts chapter 1, verse number 25. You believe in every word Bible, right? Amen. You still believe that? All right, good. You're awake. What is that verse? Come on, don't confuse me, man. My brain works slow. (laughs) 
That's it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, Acts chapter 1, verse number 25, that he may take part. Okay, let's back up here a little bit. Um, yeah, let's back up to verse number uh, 16. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. That was not a good day. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, in so much that as that field is called in their proper tongue, al that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishop prick let another take. Yep. Wherefore, of these men which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John unto the same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. And they appointed two Joseph called Bar Barsabas, uh, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said that thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether which one they choose. So anyway, uh, they did that. They, 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 drew their, they cast their lots. Verse number 25, that he may take part of the ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell. Now notice this, that he may go to his own place. Okay? Well, that's not the same thing as, why didn't he just say that he may go to hell? His own place. An appointed place, the abyss. Okay, now, um, all right. Of no, okay, so we see there this happened. The of no one else in all the Bibles it said that he went to his own place. It doesn't say that. But these two scriptures together, Judas went to his own place, and the beast ascends out of the abyss. All right, turn to John chapter seventeen, please. You know, sometimes what happens, people don't fall into the trap of shutting something off as soon as you hear something you don't you don't like. Listen all the way through. All right, you can you can hurt your your ability to learn and to grow by like shutting down as soon as you hear something you don't agree with. You got to learn to be able to take the scriptures and discern through there. And if you have a disagreement, you can have a disagreement, but you should be able to hear it through. Okay. Especially if some, I mean, I'm not, I'm not grabbing the book of Enoch here, right? This is the Bible. Amen? Yeah, I'm not grabbing the, the book of Jasher here. This is the Word of God. We're going through it. We're looking at the Scriptures, okay? John chapter 17, verse number 12. All right. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the Scripture might be fulfilled. Now, we see the son of perdition there. And then when we go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, let's go there. Yeah. No, the son of perdition, right. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. All right. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Okay? The only man in Scripture that was ever called the son of perdition, Judas Iscariot, and the Antichrist. See that? All right. Now, turn to John chapter 13. And by the way, God doesn't have to do everything neat for you to, you, you to like it and understand it. God does what he wants to do according to his word, according to his will. Now, he doesn't violate his word, but God can do things, and he tells you what he's going to do. And just because you and I can't grasp them or understand why you would do it or how it works, God still does what he wants. You know. All right. Verse number 24 Simon Peter therefore beckoned him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. Well, Jesus was troubled. Let me, let me go back here. Verily, verily, verse number 20. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, 
doubting of whom he spake. They all looked around. I was like, man, I, I don't see anybody here that would do that. Yeah. Now there was a leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter, therefore, beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then lying on Jesus' breast saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop, and when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Okay, now, this is the only time in Scripture that the Bible says that Satan enters into someone. And he enters into Judas. All right? You follow me so far? So, we have son of perdition. We have Satan entering into him, right? And now turn to John chapter 6. I mean, it start, the, the information is starting to add up, wouldn't you say? Even if you don't agree 100% yet, I understand. But I'm telling you, you start to get more witnesses and more witnesses and more witnesses. Like, okay, something's up here. John chapter 6, verse number 70. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? Now, he said that Judas was a devil. No, he said he was a devil. That's what he said. All right? It is hardly necessary to say that when I look at that, that there's any way around that. Judas, I believe, there's a lot of evidence pointing that Judas was the devil incarnate, just as the Lord Jesus was God incarnate. Christ himself said so, and we dare not doubt his word. Now, I don't know how this is all going to come about. I don't know. I don't think any of us do. Is some of it speculation? Absolutely it is, because we don't know exactly. So I'm not preaching this like I know everything how this is going to come about, because we don't. We're not told everything. Right. Well, we're going to get to that. That's going to be different, though. Right. Yep. Right. Right. He came down to, to do his damage. And they worship the... Okay, so anyway, so we see that. Just think about that. Okay, he's called the son of perdition. God calls him a devil. Jesus calls him a devil. He goes to his own place. The, the beast comes up out of his own place. Satan enters into him. That's like five witnesses to something that is going on that... Yep. Yeah, it would be better if he was never born. Right. I know. Lots of, lots of crazy stuff. I, I can't explain all of it, that's for sure. I'm not trying to either. All right, so Revelation chapter 13, verse number 4. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things. You think about this. If it is a reincarnation type of a... Because remember, Satan cannot create life. All right, he cannot create it. It does say that Satan entered into Judas, though. It does say that Judas went to his own place. Now, if there is a way, I don't know how they would, Satan would mimic that kind of reincarnation, so to speak, of life. I have a feeling it'd be something with AI, maybe, or something like that, with obviously the seed. He's going to, I don't know how that's going to work, okay? I don't know. It's going to be crazy anyway. I don't really want to know that much, but anyway, but... Something, he's, he cannot, he doesn't have the power to create life. So he has to use something he already has that's already out there. He has to take something of God's creation and pervert it and use it. Yeah, possess it, right. He has to do those things. Because he cannot do anything on his own like that. He doesn't have that power to create life. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I doubt it. Um, you know, what's that? Yeah, I think it just rotted in the field, yeah. No, it's going to be a, kind of a, kind of a, I believe, like a reincarnation type thing is what I think is going to happen. You know, yeah, that's exactly something like that. I don't know exactly all of it. There's a lot of speculation. I mean, with all these things, there's, 
speculation about Nimrod. There's speculation about a lot of things like that that we, we just can't lay any... All I can lay down is the foundation of what I see here in the scriptures that I think it's something that's worth looking into. It's worth studying and looking like, well, how is that possible? Well, there's a lot of things that I can't figure out how it's possible. I know this, that God took two prophets and he brought them up to heaven and they didn't die. And I know it says here that Judas went to his own place. Right, and those two prophets are coming back. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that we can't explain that happen supernaturally that are going to be for the end times deception. A lot of things are going to happen on earth. So don't think it a marvelous thing that Satan, remember, that Satan has the power to do what he's going to do. It's, it's, it's set for an appointed a, a time of deception. So anyway, all right. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So we see that this beast, the Antichrist, he will be worshipped for his power, and they will worship him just like they worship his father, the dragon. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Think about this, though. This is kind of an amazing thing. If, you were, if, 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 if Judas was, his spirit or whatever was locked, his soul or whatever was locked down into his own place, think of how much revenge and how much hatred he's going to have when he comes, if he came up out of that abyss. Think of the revenge that he's going to have against Israel, against the people of this earth, against Jesus, against how much hate and rage is there. Think about it. If you were trapped down there for thousands of years and you get a shot to get out, I don't know. It's just, it's something to think about how much of the rage and how much anger you would have. Right. How much you would have when it's time to go. Because you've been down there for a long time. Yeah. So, anyway, it's something to think about. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. So you see how he'll be mocking Jesus Christ. He will mock him in being worshipped as God, like we talked about in Second Thessalonians, right? We've talked about that in other verses. I'm not going to go into that a lot. Just like the Father... God the Father is worshipped, so is the Son. So, the, so Satan will mimic that same thing. And we understand just a review of the Antichrist character. We talked about this before. He'll be a blasphemer, a hater of God. He'll be a murderer and a destroyer. He will be a liar and a deceiver. He will have great intelligence. He will be exceedingly proud. He will have an impressive appearance. He will exalt himself. He will worship military might. What are we seeing now? All the nations bragging about their military and bragging about how big they got to, we got to pump more billions and billions of dollars into our military and everything. What is this leading up to a one world leader, right? To come up. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue. Forty and two months. Okay, so remember, they're going to worship this beast. Why? Because he's going to, they're worship the beast who what? had a deadly wound by a sword, and did live. Okay, so here's what I want you to think about. This is 3.5 years in to the anti... 40 and two months is how long? Three and a half years. So three and a half years into his campaign as the ruler of the world, he's going to take a deadly wound by a sword, but he's going to live. What is that? They're mocking the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord. Satan is going to mock that. That's why these people are going to think that he is Christ. That's why they're going to think that, because he's going to mock all of those things. And he's going to use that to mock them. He's going to use that act. Can he resurrect the dead? No. Not really. But he's going to mock it. And all the world is going to wonder after the beast. Because he's going to have power. What does it say? If you go back to your text, what does it say? It says, uh, let's see. 
They And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Right? And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. Right? Satan can heal. That's right. And Satan is going to heal that deadly wound right in the sight of all the sea. And what is that going to do? That's going to turn everybody to the next figure who's going to point them to the Antichrist and the dragon. And that is the second beast. Beast number two is the false prophet, that mock spirit. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. That's the false prophet, and the second beast, our one, is clear by, turn to Revelation chapter 19, verse number 20. Then we see that the false prophet and the, dra- and the, be- the second beast are the same, okay? And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped the image. These both were, both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. So we see the beast and the false prophet, the second beast, false prophet, same person, same, same figure. Now what does it say about him? It says he spake as a dragon. So he has the mouth of Satan. What does that mimic? The Holy Spirit. John chapter 14, verse number 26. The Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. Right? That lying spirit is going to bear witness to the Antichrist and the dragon being God. That lying spirit Just like the Holy Ghost of God confirms to us that the Word of God, the Bible is the Word of God, and that Jesus Christ is Lord, and that Jehovah God is the Father above, so will will this false prophet bear witness and be the second witness to the dragon. You see? John chapter 14, verse number 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. John chapter 15, verse number 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. What is he going to do? His words are going to persuade people that the Antichrist is Christ, And the dragon is God. You understand? His words are going to bear witness. And his words are going to be powerful. It says, and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. How? Because the dragon gives him his power. So he has all the power of the Antichrist. See that? He exercises all the power of the first beast. So everything the Antichrist did, the false prophet can do. What is that like? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has power to do everything that Jesus, what did he say? I will not leave you comfortless, but I'll leave the Holy Ghost. He said, my peace I give unto you. He said he would send the comforter, and because he wasn't there, the comforter would give you peace. Jesus said, in, me, in the world you have tribulation, in me you have peace. Be of good, com- be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Right? Same thing. Same thing, only the counterfeit of that. He is going to exercise all the power of the first beast and cause the earth and them that which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. What does the Holy Ghost do? Causes us to worship who? Christ and God the Father, right? That's what he does. He points us to God. What, when you read the scriptures, you get illumination, and when you are saved from who? From the Holy Ghost. You have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. Where does that come from? It comes from the Holy Ghost of God, the indwelling of the Spirit. Right? That gives us our understanding of Scriptures. Before we're saved, we can't understand the King James Bible at all. It's all like Greek, no pun intended. Right? But when we, when we get saved, then God opens our understanding up through the Holy Ghost and He shows us. 
He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. That's the comforter. That's the Holy Ghost. Now, the opposite of that, the antitype or the counterfeit of that is going to be the false prophet. He exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So he points everyone to the Antichrist. He bears witness to him. He will give validity to the words of the Antichrist with strong, deceptive power. Just like the Holy Ghost says, strong power. Right? And ye shall receive power. Right? When the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, right? Ye shall receive power, he said. How? Through the Holy Ghost. So how are they? What does it say here? Same thing. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. That's the false prophet. And I believe that I believe that's probably the Pope or some figurehead. Right. Some figurehead. That's why I don't believe the Pope is the Antichrist. I believe he is Antichrist. I don't believe he is the Antichrist. I believe he's the false prophet that is directing people to the he's preparing. He's making his path straight or crooked, whichever way you want to look at it. Right? Yeah. Anyway, so he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. So because, hey, he felt he, he lived. Uh, the, be the, the dragon resurrected him. He lived by his own power. He lived. So, hey, let's make an image unto the beast. We're going to talk about that. What is he doing? He is saying, Let us, let's make an image of man. Now, I'll give you a little, little uh, preview of what's coming. Let me ask you a question. Why... Every AI robot they make, do they want it to look like what? A man. Because man wants to be worshipped. He wants to make something in his own image. Right? He is, he is basically going to make a God. What, it, what did, uh, what's his face say? Ray Kurzweil? Is there a God? Not yet, but we're sure working on making him, aren't we? It's coming. Ah, friends, strong deception is coming. I believe God allows things to happen in our lives and deceit and other things and shows us plainly through the word of God and has shown this church plainly through the word of God because the days of deception are coming. Strong deception. And we are able to discern those days through this book. And God gave us everything. You better get your nose in the book because you're going to need it. Wow, that is interesting. I've never heard that before. A Judas hole can be described as a keyhole. Hmm. And Jesus has the key. That is interesting. Huh. I never thought about that. That's pretty good. Um, okay. So where are we here? And he had power to give life under the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now, we're going to talk about that next time. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. Notice he causeth. Causeth. He persuades them. He deceives them. To receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. So we see here that this false prophet, he remember, he mimics the word. So his words are used. His words are going to be very deceptive. And then when he's able to show signs and one signs and lying wonders to people, that's what's gonna be they're gonna be like, hey. I mean, is this not the Christ? I mean, remember? I mean, he took over the world. 
I mean, Judas, when he was here, what did he want? Man, he wanted the kingdom to take over the world. He wanted the money bag. He wanted the riches. He wanted everything. That's what the nation of Israel wanted. They wanted Jesus to be a king. They wanted to make him a king. Now, well, he was the king, but they wanted to make him a king. They wanted him to sit on that throne right there, right, and conquer the world and defeat Rome and destroy them and, 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 and you know, return them to their days of glory, right? But he didn't do that. So what they do? They rejected him, right? And that's why this is the time of the Gentiles because they have no king but Caesar, Right? That's what they said. His blood be upon us and our children forever. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, so you see these three characters, and they are all basically playing charades. That's what they're doing. They are all mimicking, counterfeiting the Trinity. Now, remember, they can't do the exact thing because he doesn't have that power. He's not God. But it will be enough of deception to deceive the whole world. And then we move on to the ultimate deception, and we'll cover that probably Wednesday, Lord willing. The ultimate deception is going to be life unto the image of the beast. But that will have two effects. One, it will deceive the whole world. Two, there'll be a remnant that says, wait a minute. We're not supposed to bow down to any images, nor make any graven images, nor serve them, nor bow down thyself, nor serve them. For I, your God, am a jealous God. They're going to remember that and be like, oh, nope. I can't do that. And that's when all hell will break loose. That's when everything's going to get crazy. That's when the Antichrist, his fangs come out, and he starts seeing who he really is, and it's going to get crazy.